So then go to the QM Plus website and download from statistics data. Um, if you go down to lecture three, download the file characteristics of clone and stormtroopers and open this up in SPSS. Okay, and it should look something like that. You may have it looking like that. In there you'll see that we have a list of 100 each of Republic clone troopers and stormtroopers and some of the things that we may have asked them. So for this piece of research I've said that we're looking at height and weight. You can see in the file I've also included their age and a satisfaction survey was also taken. Uh, Republic tr clone troopers couldn't be involved in this. That's past data, but in the current study we were able to obtain that information for stormtroopers. But we're not going to deal with that just for the moment. So the first thing to, uh, I want to do is just visualise this data. And there are several ways you can do this, but we're going to go back over some of the things that I've put screencasts up uh, just to so you can get a bit of practice. So the first thing I want to do is bin this data. And that means grouping it, uh, it doesn't mean throwing it away, it means grouping it um, into, into sensible intervals. Uh, and turning the height, let's look at height first, turn it into a categorical variable. So if we go to transform, and you can go down, you'll see there's this menu option, um, visual binning. We'll click on that, and then select height, and move that into variables for bin. When you're ready, press continue. You should get something that looks like that. So we get to visualise the data automatically, but there's a few things we want to do. We want to actually um, make specific cut points, it calls them. That's just divide the data up in a specific way. First thing to remember to do is choose the binned variable name. If you don't do this, you lose all of your hard work. So you're better off just doing this to start with. Is that? Yeah, that is showing. So what I do, I, I would call it the current variable name uh, and append bin to the end of it. So I'm very imaginative. I'd call it height bin. You can call it what you like. You can call it red if that's what you want, but uh, it's not very helpful. Okay, uh, then the next thing that you need to do is we make these cut points. So SPSS has automatically divided the data up to visualise it. But actually for us to be able to use this in any, any useful way, we need to divide it up in a way that makes sense to us. So make cut points. If you look at the data, you'll see, so we go from about 179, and it goes up to something around 186. So I'm gonna put my first cut point location in as 179. Uh, I'm going to make the one centimetre wide. And it's automatically told me that it wants to use seven, seven bins. Well, actually, I want it to do more than that, so I'm going to put in 10. Now you'll see that the first cut point is 179. Number of cut points is 10, the width is 1 centimetre, and so the last cut point location is 188. You can do this how, how you like, uh, it's just, and you, it, uh, it's worthwhile experimenting with it to get a feel for um, what bin in the data does. It's just a way to help us visualise it. And once you've done that, you can press apply. And you see you get these lines come up, and that tells you where the bins are going to be. We can also make labels. So if you press the Make Labels button, 
it now tells you what range each of those bins covers. 179.1 to 180 centimetres is that, that bin there. And anything less than 179 or less than or equal to 179 centimetres is this first bin. Once you've done that, you should just press OK. And it'll ask you if you want to cre create that variable. You just press OK. And you see now we get a column called height bin with all of that, uh, all, all of those bins in. And then to visualize it, we'll go to the chart builder under the graphs menu, graphs, chart builder. We'll use a bar chart. drag that bar chart because I want to compare some groups so you see this has got blue and green indicating there's more than one group then on the x-axis I'm going to put these bin heights you see it's created this variable now this ordinal variable bin heights and drag those onto the x-axis and I want to cluster using Republic or Stormtrooper or Imperial Trooper. So that allows me to choose how I cluster my data. So I want to group it by the type of individual that we're looking at. If you press OK, hopefully we get... There we go. The first thing we should get is something that looks like that. So if we just look at the screen and we look at the, the, the data, if you think back to the normal curves that we looked at, it kind of has the appearance of one of those normal curves. So that would be a reasonable thing to say. It looks normal. Um, looks roughly symmetric. They look the same. And so we might actually come up with those initial observations. These are results. So we just state what we see. We're not making any analysis really beyond what we see. But we can state some of those obvious things. And so once you've done that qualitative analysis, then we can use a, a stating what we see. Then we can use some statistical tests to actually get some numbers out that might help us further qualify what we've seen. And so in this case, I would suggest that to compare the means of these two data sets, we'll use a t-test. So what we'll do is we'll go uh, back into SPSS, and you've got your data here, and so it doesn't matter even if you didn't manage to get the last step done. You don't need that step to, to, do, to do this. You can click on Analyze and see it's conveniently there's this thing called Compare Means. And we want to compare independent samples. And our test variable in this case is height. And our grouping variable, well we want to group them by whether they're Republic or Imperial. Um, here you need to know the coding. It's the coding for group one is zero, and the coding for group two. So group one is uh, Republic, clone troopers, they were coded with a zero. And uh, group two is Imperial stormtroopers, and they were coded with a one. We press OK, and we get some analysis come up. And here we get the results from the independent samples t-test. So there's a couple of things to look at here. The value that you're, or the thing that you'll always look at when you do one of these tests, the metric that we tend to, tend to be interested in 
is this p-value, which is the significance. That's two-tailed, and all that means is you're looking at two sides of a distribution. But this is telling us that there is a, a, about a 72% chance that the null hypothesis explains this data, i.e. there is no difference between the means of the heights of clone troopers and stormtroopers. So the t-test has compared the means of two distributions. And we can see that if we go up. So these are the two distributions being compared. The blue and the green are two different distributions. And we said, well, they appear to, appear to, cut, to follow some kind of normal curve, roughly. I've drawn a skewed curve. When we, comp we want to compare the means of those to see if the mean height of these troopers has, is any different. So Republic and Imperial era, is there any difference in height? Because it's a physical characteristic um, and might be indicative of, of other changes. So then we did the t-test as a way of comparing those means. To, s to tell you the probability that um, the probability that the means of the two distributions is the same. That's what we're trying to find out. The probability that the means of two distributions is the same. And so here it's set telling us that we have a point, a p-value, that's just your p-value, a 0.718, which is about 72%. So we have a probability of 72% that the null hypothesis explains this data. 72% probability that the means of the two distributions are the same. 72% probability that the height of clone troopers is the same as the height of um, stormtroopers. Assuming alpha of 0.05, 5%, that's saying there is no significant difference. So we then, that's when we then compare to our, uh, our decided upon significance level. So if I said significance level is 5%, I am, my p-value is greater than my significance level, therefore I'm going to say there is no difference. There is no statistically significant difference between the heights of clone troopers and stormtroopers, or two groups of individuals. Okay, so I, I'll just um, go over what I've just said. So I said, my visual assessment is that they are visually similar, the two distributions. The green and the blue ones look roughly the same shape. The peaks are in roughly the same places. And they have a roughly normal appearance. That's a reasonable assumption. They seem to have that shape, that characteristic bell shape. We have our, dis oh, oh, we can do some descriptive statistics which we saw under here. So under all these tables that were output, there's these descriptive statistics that pop out. And you see we've got our standard error of the mean came out there. which, And that allows us to say, we can make this statement, that the population means are expected uh, to be within the range 182.7 to 183.1 centimetres with 95% confidence. So we've used the confidence interval, which is two times the standard error of the mean. We get standard error of the mean there, multiply it by two, then subtract it and add it to the mean value. And that gives us our confidence interval. And so I come up with this statement of how confident I am that the population mean sits within a particular range. These are my sample means. And it's actually roughly the same for both of these. If you look at the values there, they're roughly the same. And then we did this thing of comparing the means using the t-test. So in this case, I said that the null hypothesis is accepted. The null, no difference hypothesis, the hypothesis that height of clone troopers and stormtroopers is the same is what we accept because this p-value is greater 
than our chosen significance level. 